People often get wrapped up in their daily lives and don't really think about nature and the surroundings until a disaster comes along. One of the things that the geoscientists do is they can actually work to help society overcome and, and prepare for these disasters. And these advances that have been made through technology, through theory, and through advances in our understanding are just amazing. When an earthquake ruptures, it sends P-wave energy and S-wave energy up towards the surface. We detect the P-wave energy, which is very low amplitude, and use it to predict the strong shaking that comes with the S-waves. We can then push out an alert to everybody's cell phone so people know what is coming. This way they get seconds, tens of seconds warning to prepare and get ready before the shaking starts. Earthquake, moderate shaking, expected in four seconds. The biggest improvement in tornado warnings that's occurred is the use of Doppler radar. Beginning in the early 1970s, research started looking at being able to use Doppler radar that can see how the winds move within a thunderstorm to be able to understand when a tornado is about to occur. Back in the 1980s, we only put out a warning prior to a tornado less than 25% of the time. Now it's more than 75%. And almost all of that improvement is due to Doppler radar and being able to see how the winds change within a storm as a precursor to a tornado actually forming. Heat waves cause more deaths on average than any other natural hazards. And in the last 10 years, there has been a lot of effort being put into like regional scale weather modeling. And now we can go almost to city scale. In fact, people who live in very dense urban areas are more vulnerable to these extreme events. Now by combining high resolution numerical modeling with high resolution satellite images, we can study the implications of these extreme events to urban areas more, more thoroughly. And this will help us tremendously in designing sustainable mitigation strategies to combat them in the future. In my work at the U.S. Geological Survey as a geophysicist, I use airborne geophysics instruments dangling from helicopters to help us look inside volcanoes to look for weak areas that might source really large debris avalanches or landslides. And this work has helped inform communities on what to do in case they have one of these landslides. USGS has put alerting systems, communities have built evacuation planning, and so I'm used to seeing in my own work a link between basic scientific research and helping communities prepare themselves for disasters. And as president of AGU, I get to see a lot more of that. We see scientists and policymakers and other NGOs and businesses to all talk about how we all together can address some of our nation's most pressing problems.